watching the award-winning GHS-TV, a nationally recognized student television station. And welcome to this week's edition of GHS TV's award winning talk show, Crosstalk. I'm your host, Caitlin Poindexter. Each week in this time slot, we take a look at different issues, personalities, and events that affect you and our community. COVID 19 continues to impact Americans' everyday lives. Probably the biggest impact is happening in education. This is the first time in history nearly every primary, secondary, and post-secondary school is providing virtual learning. This week, we are focusing our attention on the class of 2020-2021 and how the pandemic is affecting their college acceptance processes. Here with us to talk about how a local university is dealing with college admissions is Paige Rooney from the University of Memphis Admissions Department. Ms. Rooney, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join me today. Absolutely, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. In what ways has COVID-19 changed the way University of Memphis is recruiting students? That is a very long list. So um, the University of Memphis has definitely had to pivot to a lot of virtual recruitment this year. Um, we haven't been in your high schools as often. You may have noticed we typically would have admissions counselors visiting schools, sitting in guidance offices, um, setting up tables and really just engaging with students. But we've had to move a lot of that to a virtual setting because so many of our high schools are meeting in a virtual capacity or not allowing visitors and so um, it's really allowed us to engage with students from further away which is great but we've definitely missed the face-to-face -face interaction we're hosting events um, virtually so some of you at germantown may have gotten a chance to see um, or attend our men bound day for high school students we've had a, a variety of virtual events and so we're sort of hitting our stride now where we're learning what works and what doesn't work in that virtual environment and we're trying to offer some small kind of socially distanced, safe um, recruitment events on campus next spring. We're hopeful that things will go well and that we'll be able to do that. Well, college visits are a rite of passage for students. How has the university adjusted to allow students to still take part of these events? Yes, absolutely. I know for me, and I'm sure for many of you who are looking at colleges, I was looking for the place that felt like home. And when the events are virtual, it's hard to get that feeling of what it's really like to be on the campus. And so um, for a little while, we shut down our on-campus visits because we wanted to make sure we were able to welcome guests safely and um, in a way that made sense. And so about a month to two months ago, we've started offering on-campus tours again. And so we invite people to come to campus. We're limiting how many people can come at once. We're spreading people out, obviously. Um, most of our campus tour is outdoors. And so that definitely helps. Masks or a face covering is required. Um, and we really want students to be able to come and see what a day in the life would be like, as opposed to just hearing about it in that virtual capacity. So our campus tours are up and running. We offer tours on Monday. I mean, on Monday through Friday um, at 9.30 or 1.30 p.m., 9.30 a.m., 1.30 p.m. And so we invite y'all to come see us if you can. If you're not able to or you feel uncomfortable, we completely understand that as well. We have a virtual tour on our website. And so really just trying to be as flexible as possible because I'm sure y'all have all learned 2020 flexibility is key um, and trying to just meet people where they are. How has the number of incoming freshman applicants been affected? Hopefully not at all, but 
<laughs> we will see for sure. Um, so being in a city like Memphis, we're lucky. We are a really affordable institution. And so we are a place that hopefully will be a great option for students, um, especially students from the surrounding area. We have seen that, you know, maybe harder for some of our out-of-state applicants to travel and want to uproot and move somewhere in such a kind of unprecedented, uncertain situation. But we have seen applicants, um, the, the numbers have been similar to years prior. We definitely think that people have waited to apply a little bit later. So typically we would have had a large number of applicants in August, September, but our peak has been more October, November. So it seems that people have all kind of been waiting to see what, when are things going to be normal? When is the other shoe going to drop? And we've all kind of realized it. We don't know when that's going to be. And so hopefully students will continue to seek out those colleges that they're interested in and you know, complete those processes, but we haven't seen a huge decrease um, and we hope that we can be a good option for students to, you know, have a, a lower cost institution in a city that is a great opportunity and also somewhere that is respecting and um, prioritizing student safety through all this. With the pandemic causing standardized testing to become less accessible for students, how is the university adjusting application requirements in order to make it easier for students to apply? Great question. That has been one of, I think, the biggest hurdles because typically, um, for those of you that may be getting emails from colleges and wondering how on earth they found you, um, colleges use the ACT as a way to communicate with students. And so um, having fewer people that were able to take the ACT or the SAT in the spring of their junior year has definitely impacted some of that communication. So um, as far as admissions requirements for us, we have adopted a test flexible admissions policy. So what that means is if you have a test score, we encourage you to submit it. If you do not, you can apply without it. We will review what we call an SRQ. It's a um, supplemental review questionnaire. And so if you apply um, without a test score, we might send you one of those to learn a little bit more about you here, some of your preparation in high school, some of your goals, um, and our committee will evaluate you based on that in lieu of a test score. We originally were still asking for test scores for scholarships in our honors college, but we found that that just wasn't accessible to people. There's still people who haven't been able to take their ACT um, and we're still experiencing this. And so we've also adopted a test optional scholarship policy. So students with a 3.25 or higher who apply to the University of Memphis will be invited to complete a test optional scholarship questionnaire. So there is a little bit more work on the student's end. You have to answer some questions and tell us a little more about you, but we're hoping to be able to award scholarships based on those questionnaires later in the spring semester. Um, because again, the whole goal is to make this as easy as possible in what is definitely not an easy situation for any of us. Well, Ms. Rooney, what do students need to do to prepare for the changes admissions departments all over the world are making? Yes, there. So really, I think do your research. Um, be sure that you are checking the websites of the institutions that you're interested in. Make sure you're on their email lists. Um, I know that you'll probably get more emails than you ever wanted in your life. Um, the ones that you don't need, you can easily file away, but you never know when it's going to say, hey, are you interested in this scholarship opportunity? So um, stay on top of things, get on the email lists, make a connection when you can, whether it's your admissions counselor or another representative and go ahead and treat this like any normal year do virtual tours sign up for events when you can and use this time to narrow down your decision most of you are not going to be starting college next spring so you've at least got six months you might have a year and two years and beyond so um, do as much as you can continue to be involved in your high schools and work really hard to keep your grades up even if things are a little bit different um, everything that you do matters and so even if you're in the ninth grade or younger right now watching this i don't know who all this goes to but um, everything that you do matters so whether it be your gpa or your college preparation in preparing for your standardized test, taking your standardized test, answering questions. If you answer the University of Memphis SRQ or if you're filling out applications at other institutions, be thorough and take some time. So I know we all want to, you know, mark the list, get, get things done, but really put some time and effort into it because it can definitely pay off. Well, Ms. Rooney, this was a great conversation. Thank you for talking to me today.
Thank you so much for having me. And if you guys are interested in the University of Memphis, please, everything you need to know is on our website, memphis.edu. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to our admissions office. And we want to be resources, whether you want to come to us or you just want help with college in general. We want to support you through that process because, you know, it can be confusing. So don't hesitate to reach out if anybody needs us. Thank you again. Thank you. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we will hear about an organization getting local seniors ready for college. GHSCV started in 1982, and it was just a couple of cameras, a couple of on-air personality, and it's really grown into what you see today. It's a multi-million dollar studio with top-of-the-line technology. Being able to operate you know, all of the machinery in the control room, uh, being able to use all of our software and hardware that we have around the studio, uh, is a great skill because this is top-of-the-line equipment. I feel like this class has brightened my horizon. It's something that I never thought I would be doing, um, especially as a student. GHS TV is probably one of the most hands-on experiences a student will ever get in their lifetime. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Nothing really has just the vibe that we have here. Especially after you finished, you get a real rush of, wow, I just did that. By the time a student graduates from Germantown High School, they will know pretty much every position there is, from producing to directing um, to on-air work. You learn time management, you learn organization, you learn how to work with people, how to better communicate with people. We put a lot on them, and they have to be able to have the responsibility and the knowledge to get everything that we ask them. I had very little experience, uh, so in the past three years, the skills that I've learned have, have absolutely exponentially grown. The class has actually helped me figure out that I want to go to college for journalism. When a student graduates, they are the best possible version of themselves that they can be. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Crosstalk. In addition to the pandemic and virtual learning, high school seniors are also trying to get into college. Reach Memphis has made it their mission to get seniors ready for their next chapter. Here to talk about what they are doing in the COVID era is Candace Hagens from Reach Memphis. Ms. Hagens, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm excited that I get to speak with you. My pleasure, I'm very happy to be here. Can you talk about the mission of Reach Memphis and how your organization has adjusted since the beginning of the pandemic? Absolutely. So our Reach Memphis, our, our, our mission at Reach Memphis is very simple, and that's to help students prepare for college as well as beyond that. And so our mission hasn't changed. It's basically been the methods on how we do it. We've transferred all of our in-person sessions to being virtual sessions, as everything is in this world today. Um, so Zoom is our platform. That's how we handle our sessions on the basics of college, uh, the college process. You know, how do you write that college essay? How do you uh, interview for a college interview? interview, um, what, how, did you, how can you manage your time when you get to college? Just those, not only those hard skills that you need in order to get to college, but the skills that help you get through college as well. So um, those are our main primary source of, of communication. And we do some one-on-one -on -one with students as well, phone calls, text messages, emails, um, pretty much every method of communication you possibly could think of is, is uh, what we have ongoing with our students. From what you've seen, what are students struggling with right now? There's two major things I've seen um, but from student to student. One thing is that social emotional component that students have that they're lacking. I mean, their interactions with friends and being able to just, you know, have that normal, not only just with friends, but with with teachers, the interactions that they would normally have on day to day with teachers, all of that's missing. And that's sometimes a really big adjustment for our students. Uh, some handle it better than others, but it's definitely a, across the board a struggle. Another struggle I've seen is just with students not being able to adapt to the online learning environment as students learn differently. Not every student is made to learn, you know, that, that works best for them in a virtual environment. They really need that one-on-one -on -one interaction um, with, with the teacher in order to really be able to learn. And so 
that's an adjustment for for our students and we try to help that out by you know tutoring if that's needed or just outside resources to help sort of compensate but those are the two biggest common things i've seen what methods do you implement in your instruction to ensure students feel prepared and organized for their transition into college that's really the whole what the whole organization is about actually and it starts with a summer experience in our program we start we start taking students in the 10th grade and they go on a summer experience to a college or a university or to a uh, prep school and they take courses from anywhere from one to five weeks over the summer and they really get that experience of what a classroom looks like in college how that environment is and of course some of our students had to do that virtually because of COVID but they still get that sense for the difference between high school courses and college courses and it gives them a very good idea and then once they do that summer experience uh, I work primarily with the juniors so they come to me and we kind of build on that and talk do we do some of those things I mentioned earlier okay now that you've gotten a feel for what college looks like what does how can you figure out the right college and answering all those questions and helping them um, with just the, those one-on-one -on -one conversations as well as some websites that we normally recommend to help them out as well what resources do you provide to keep students organized and informed well I think the key thing is uh, communication. So we're in contact with college admissions reps from you know different areas, um, particularly our senior college counselor participates in a lot more webinars than I do just to make sure she stays abreast of the changes that the colleges are making because the colleges will host these webinars to get information to guidance counselors and, and we count as that so we participate in them so we can pass that information along to our students if they're making changes or things they should consider in the admissions process that they weren't considering at first and that really helps the students know what to expect moving forward and how COVID is impacting their admissions process. What changes at the university level do you think will stay even after the pandemic ends? I think for sure this online uh, platform will stick. To what extent is the question and I think it may vary from school to school but moving forward I really think this online platform is here to stay. I, I think even if it's just from a pers per perspective Perspective of a professor um, deciding that they want to do office hours virtually instead of you know having people actually come to their office. I think those are some of the ways that it'll always be embedded in, in college moving forward, even if the classes aren't required to be online. Well, as we head into the holiday season, how can students ease their anxiety about acceptance decisions? That's a hard one. It really is, and I think part of it for us is is helping them choose their options carefully. So we, we always encourage our students to strategically apply to schools, to not just apply to one type of school, but to apply to public and private, in-state and out-of-state. And that helps give some control. So even if the admissions decisions don't necessarily go their way, they feel good about the fact that they still have some power to decide ultimately what options will work out for them. We want them to to apply to a variety of schools and sometimes that control helps. Now you're going to have anxiety when it comes to the college admissions decision even, even if we're not in a pandemic so that doesn't go away but just knowing that they have those options and that they have support and that we're here to help them navigate those options and negotiate with schools and tell them what to say it's sometimes reassuring um, just knowing that they have someone who understands the process kind of walking with them. Well, for students who are not accepted, how do you assist them in changing their path and helping them recover? Well, I can say that all of our students get at least one school uh, that they that they want to go to, thankfully, um, and that that sort of helps that they have at least one option available. And it really is just getting them, encouraging them that um, just because it didn't work out a certain way doesn't mean that uh, that you, what you're trying to do isn't stopped like you can still pursue your career you can still pursue all of your interests and it's not determined by if you got admissions from this one school or not um it's, it doesn't make it easy all of a sudden but it is it can be reassuring just to know that this isn't the end and that you can continue to move forward um i myself am i actually an alum of the program i went through the program as a high school student before i started working here and so um for me that was the case i had a mentor who was in the reach memphis program with me and she was great at just helping being a listening ear being encouraging helping me walk through my options when i didn't get into the schools i wanted to get into and it made a world of difference for me personally and so it means a lot to me to be able to move forward and give that 
same uh, encouragement to the other students. Well, Ms. Higgins, this was a great conversation. I enjoyed having you here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we will hear how high school counselors are helping students apply for college virtually. Art is really an expression of the self. If you look at a piece of art, you can see the artist within it. All just really depends on what I feel like doing at the time. I generally have different ideas every day. I really get excited when my students come up to me with unique ideas that I've not heard of. You can't let everybody tell you who you are or what your art is or how to be what you want to be. I really let the students go according to how they're progressing and I try to give them as much as they're able to handle. Well I like drawing a lot and I like painting and I like being able to um, improve my skill and show people my art. Um, I try to get them to think creatively. I think that's one of the few things that we as teachers really need to try to push with our students. I can't sing. I can't act either. But I can do art. So that's why I chose art. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to this week's edition of Crosstalk. I'm Caitlin Poindexter. Consulting the counselor at your high school is the easiest way to get the inside track on the college application process. However, it is a little more complicated this year. LaShonda Norman, the college and career counselor at Germantown High School, is here to help explain the tools she uses to help students apply for college. Ms. Norman, we have worked together in the past, but it's great to be able to speak with you in this fashion. Great to be here. GHS seniors are overseen by three different counselors. Ms. Morris, who's in charge of International Baccalaureate, Ms. Odom, the regular senior counselor, and then you, and you are specifically the college and career counselor, am I correct? That is correct. How does this system make overseeing the senior class easier and more efficient? Well, for me, Teams makes it a lot more efficient. Um, I have the opportunity to reach more students um, in a short period of time. Um, before uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID, I would have to meet with each senior individually, and I would see roughly 15, 20 seniors per day. Now with teams, I have the opportunity to group them in groups of 20 and I can meet with them for, instead of 30 minutes, I can meet with them for an hour. And then I also have the opportunity to meet with them on the weekend because they all have devices. It's convenient for them. So it's really made college and career counseling for me a little bit more manageable. What are you most concerned about during this college application season? I am most concerned that students don't have direct access to me during the day. Uh, they're in their classes all day from eight to three. So it's kind of hard for them when they have burning questions in the middle of the day to maybe get to me or come over to the uh, counseling office and say, hey, Ms. Norman, I have this concern. Um, also, it could be a little bit concerning because some students may have uh, social emotional issues that they need someone to speak with immediately. And because we're virtual, it's kind of hard to meet that need immediately. Yes, we do have procedures in place to assist them, but there's nothing like having that student in front of you to address their concerns. Well, I'm personally applying to colleges right now, and I can say that all the work required can be very exhausting. How are you staying on top of students' work and making sure that they are staying motivated? Well, it takes a lot of 
multitasking. <laughs> um, I have my calendar color coded. So, um, and I have a uh, remind system set up where I can text students and parents anytime I receive information, whether it's a free college application or a new scholarship is available to them. So I have the remind system to do that as well. Um, I also use uh, Google Voice, Google Text, where I can reach students um, if I can't get them via remind. Um, I do a lot of calendar team meetings or sending out a lot of emails. So it takes a lot of um, organization and management to be, be able to keep them motivated and say, hey, you can do this. Yes, we're virtual, but nothing's changed. The only difference is that we're talking via technology now. So um, I try to use different things like I email some students today, including you, congratulating you on your ACT score. So whatever it takes to keep them motivated and excited about their college year, whether we're in physical or virtual, um, I just try to find little things to keep them motivated. For students who currently have an undecided major, how do you help them plan for post-secondary education in an area of interest? Well, you will find now a lot of students haven't really made the decision about a particular major um, because now it's different. You know, uh, there is so much more to explore. Some students um, may have decided, yeah, I want to go to a four year college or university. But after a little bit more research or me sending out some information or they're learning something new, they may make that decision to transition to a technical or trade college. So when they're undecided, I tell them it's OK to take your time the first semester. Now up until the first semester, you're enrolled in college to really get a feel for what you want to do and to continue to take career uh, interest inventories or assessments or, you know, if you can call and speak to someone in a particular field to say, hey, may I have a conversation with you about accounting or business or whatever, just to make that decision. So I tell them it's really not a rush but it is a rush, so you just have to find that fine balance between uh, making that decision between now and the end of their uh, first semester of their freshman year. So a lot of students don't know because they're into the forensics and all of this now. There's just so much more to explore uh, than when I was in college. So they're, they're pretty much, sometimes they can be all over the place, but you could just ask basic questions. You know, what's your favorite TV show or um, what do you like to do when you're not doing schoolwork? You know, what do you and your friends do? And you can really help a student make a decision about a major just asking simple questions. Well, this year, Shelby County Schools has partnered with a new college planning platform called Naviance. Give us an overview of the program and talk about how, does, how it is beneficial to Shelby County students. Well, Naviance is a new program. I actually, I love the program. I love it because now it gives me, the college and career counselor, the opportunity to put everything in one platform. So Naviance is a college and career planning platform for students grades eight through 12. And in the platform, students can take career assessments. They can uh, take tours, college tours. They can research colleges, scholarships. They can actually watch videos of different people in different professions to kind of make that decision about what happens after high school. So it's a great platform where students will learn multiple things. Right now, the students are doing what's called an intro to Navient scavenger hunt. Just learning the platform, becoming familiar with the platform. And then from there, they will take career assessments. Again, they can um, actually do scholarship searches. Everything is in there from FastWeb to MyScholly. So it's a great place to house everything so students don't have to go to multiple websites to actually plan their post-secondary uh, experience. It's all in Naviance. Well, Ms. Norman, this was a great conversation. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you for having me. Once again, I'd like to thank all the guests who came on the show today. This episode was very informative. Despite everything going on right now, it's comforting to know students are still getting the help they need to become college ready. For more information on our programming, please check us out on the web at ghstv.org, where we are streaming live 24 hours a day. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Caitlin Poindexter. From all of us here at GHS TV, thank you for watching Crosstalk, and I hope to see you again.